Do you need your visitors to accept terms and conditions before they can submit contact forms on your website? Then you're in the right place. I'm going to show you how in this video. And I'm going to show you how to make this experience extra special for your visitors by incorporating pop-ups. Not annoying ones, but ones that make it much easier to use the acceptance features that Contact Form 7 provides you. Hi, I'm Bjorn from the WP Learning Lab. Now let's get started. Before I get into the nuts and bolts of what we're actually creating and how to do it, I'm going to show you what we're creating. So we're going to fill out this form really quick. And down here we have these check boxes. If these are not clicked, you cannot click the submit button. If I check one, you still can't. I have to check both to make it work. These are called acceptance fields. So they have to, they have to, the, your visitor has to accept something before they can actually proceed to submit the form. And to make their lives a lot easier, we've also added our privacy policy and our terms of service into a pop-up. If you click on either of those, it's going to show the privacy policy or the terms of service or whatever it is that you're accepting here as a pop-up. And then they can see it right there and not leave the page. And check these boxes and then submit the form. And the email is then sent to your inbox or the website admins inbox. So that's what we're building. Let's get into how to build it. The first thing we'll do is create the contact form that has the acceptance boxes on it because that might be all you want to do. And then we'll add in the pop-up functionality afterwards because you might want to take it to the next level. So the first thing is we go to plugins and add new and we look up contact form seven. If it's already installed on your website, it'll show active as grayed out. If not, it'll show an install now button like here. Click on install now and then click on activate and you got your contact form seven contact form builder. It adds a new menu item over here. Click on that. This page here will show all your contact forms. We're going to create a brand new one for this. I'm going to click on add new. I'm going to call the form contact form seven terms of service acceptance. Change this. I'm going to call it legalese acceptance. And our plain form here doesn't have an acceptance field currently. To add one, I'm going to put it right above the submit button, which is here. If you want to know more about what all these tags mean and how to decipher what's in here, watch my full contact form seven tutorial where I walk through the core plugin. I'll link to that in the description down below. Maybe the card up above too, we'll see. And that video will explain everything to do with contact form seven and adding the acceptance feature is more of a specialized video, which is what this video is about. So we're adding a space up above the submit button. I'm gonna click on the acceptance button here. The only thing we really have to do here is add a condition, like I've read the privacy policy. If you uncheck this box, then it will not disable the submit button if you don't check this box in the front end. I'll illustrate clearly what that means in just a second. First, let's just add this in. Insert tag. We have the optional tag inside of here, meaning it's optional. We can delete that later to make it required. And I've read the privacy policy. So let's see what this looks like first. We're going to edit our contact page. And here is our contact form seven widget. Again, this is in the core contact form seven video. So if you want to see how all this works, how to set it up, go to that video that I referenced earlier. I'm going to pick the contact form I'm working on, click on update, go to view page. And this is our form here with our button. You check that box. I've read the privacy policy and this will be submitted in the email, I believe. If we go to mail and we copy this field into our message, then that will show up in the email that we receive that this box was checked. And again, I went, I did that a little fast going to the mail and showing how that works. This is all covered in that core contact form seven video. So if you want to know how this all works, it's all in there. Nothing skipped. So this box is currently set to optional. So if we fill out this field or all these fields, I mean, and click on submit, the form is going to submit. That's working as if it's submitting. I won't uh, bother us with actually waiting for it because we're just playing around with the acceptance box. If I take out the optional here and click on save, then come back to our contact form, do the same thing again. So now if I hover, hover over the submit button, I can't click it. it. Has that little do not enter sign, I can't do it until I check this box, then I can. And that's what the optional versus required means inside of the acceptance form or acceptance field creator that we saw here, optional versus required. And while we're waiting for that to happen, 
go ahead and click the like button to let me know you find this video helpful and click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss new future videos. Now let's get back to it. I'm gonna make another, no, I'm not. First, I'm gonna add a link. So this form is great. I read the privacy policy, but people might be like, well, where's the privacy policy? I haven't read it. I haven't been told to, I don't know what's going on. I wanna read it. So we should put a link right there. To do that, we go into our form builder there's going to be a little bit of code here. I'm sorry, but it's not that hard. You copy exactly what I'm doing, and it's not that hard. So you open a pointy bracket or greater than sign, less than sign, depending on which way you go. A H R E F equals open and close quotes, and then a closing pointy bracket, and then greater than sign, forward slash A, less than sign. This creates a link. I have to put the destination of the link inside these quotes. So if I go back out to here, no privacy policy, page links anywhere. Okay, so if we go into our pages, privacy policies here, I'm gonna right click on view, copy link, go back to our contact form and paste it right there. Boom, and one of the quotes is gone. You gotta make sure those, both those quotes stay, quote on each side of the link. Save that, come back out here, refresh the page. Now we have a link. If someone clicks on that link, whether they click that checkbox or not, that now takes them to the privacy policy page. But the way it's set up right now, it went right to this page, and gotta click back to go back to the contact page. To fix that, what we can do is add in here Target equals open and close quotes underscore blank. Save that. Refresh the contact form page. So we get the new version of our form. Click on privacy policy and now watch up at the top here. It's going to create a new tab. New tab, privacy policy is over here. When they close this tab, they'll be back to the contact form. So that's a little bit better, but it's not quite as good as if we had a pop-up like a lot of sites web, like a lot of websites have. And we're gonna build that in just a second. But first I want to add two acceptance buttons just to see how that works. Click on acceptance. I've read the terms of service. You can make these again optional or not optional, however you wanna do it. I'm going to add a link. I'm just gonna copy this one, put that right there and copy this part and put that at the end of terms of service deleted terms let me write that back in i have read the terms of service all right safe actually not safe i have to get the actual link go back to our pages copy the link address and put the correct url right there there we go, save that. Now refresh the contact page. We're gonna have two buttons or check boxes. Having them both unchecked, submit button doesn't work. Having one checked, submit button doesn't work. The other one checked, submit button doesn't work. Both checked, now it works. So you can have as many of these radio buttons as you want. And that will disable or enable the submit button depending on how you have it set up of on uh, terms of required versus not required and to make this appear in the mail that you that you receive we again have to copy this little short code here paste it into the email and there we go and in fact i'm going to say accepted privacy policy question mark that'll be the answer there and then accepted terms of service so then we'll have an email record of whether or not they accepted those things. Save that to make sure all of our emails have the information we need. And now the next thing we wanna do is create the pop-up because always going to these separate pages, although it's fun, is not a great user experience. A better user experience is to have the information show up right here, right on this page. They can see it on the pop-up, they can close the pop-up, submit the form. So to do that, I've installed a plugin called Pop-Up Maker. 
To find it, go to plugins and add new, search pop-up maker, and there's a lot of different options. You can even use code, JavaScript code, to create your pop-up if you want to, but the pop-up maker does a lot of good stuff as well, so I use the pop-up maker for a lot of websites. And one of the most powerful things you can do for your lead generation is creating an exit pop-up. That's not the topic of this video, but you can do that same thing with this plugin, so you can do lots of things for your site. So I don't mind adding another plugin if I use it for other stuff too. So this is the one I used up here. I'm sure any one of these other ones would work as long as they make pop-ups. So pop-up maker adds pop-up maker as a menu item. I've created a privacy policy pop-up right here, and I'm going to create a new one just so I can walk through the whole thing. I didn't want to see that tour. Okay, let's click on create new pop-up right here. This is all using the free version of Pop-Up Maker as well. I'm gonna call this Privacy Policy Pop-Up, and for the title, this Privacy Policy. In this box right here is where the contents of the pop-up are going to exist. So for this pop-up, we have to get the privacy page contents and paste them into that field. Copy that, paste it in. And you'll have to, if you update your privacy policy, update it in both places. It's kind of annoying. Other pop-up makers that I haven't used yet might be able to just pull that page content into the pop-up, but I haven't seen that work for this one or any other ones for that matter. Only custom built ones, I've seen that kind of action. For triggers, we want to add a new one and it's gonna be click open, as in they click a link to open the pop-up. And I'm going to uncheck this, prevent pop-up from showing to visitors again using a cookie because the privacy pop-up should work all the time. They should be able to read it two or three times before submitting the form if they want to. If you check this box, it's only gonna show up once, or it's only gonna work once as in the pop-up shows up once, then it never shows up again for a certain time frame that we set somewhere else. I'm just gonna uncheck this so it's always going to be popping up. And this is an important piece of information right here. We have to add this to our link in the contact form seven generator. And since we unchecked that box a moment ago to make it so the pop-up does show up every time, we don't have a cookie. You'd have a cookie here if you did not uncheck that box. Click on add. Now we have a trigger. I thought the CSS class would be down there. It's not. I'll click on the edit button or the pencil. I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna put it in our form builder, where did it go? It's gone. Let's open this a new tab so we have both these tabs open. This host I'm on keeps doing this security check. It's super annoying, super annoying. Click on edit to open the form we're working on. And this is the privacy policy link right here. I'm going to add after target class equals open and close brackets, or sorry, quotes. And then we paste in that class that the pop-up maker gave us. Click on save. And now, if we go to the contact page, refresh the page, and then click on privacy policy. That didn't work. That's because we didn't publish this pop-up. If you don't publish it, it's not gonna work. So come back out here, refresh the page again, and now click on privacy policy. Now we have a pop-up. When we close it, it's back to our form. We have some flexibility in customizing it because it wasn't the perfect pop-up by any means as far as uh, terms of service and privacy policies go. So we can go to display and we can choose one of these different options. The center pop-up is probably the most useful one for privacy policies and things like that. Under appearance, I'm going to choose the light box theme. I found that works the best. You can test other ones. You can also click on here to customize the theme, but I go to display again and then size on this tab. Size to small, max width of, make a 50% of the screen size so that it's not so big. Click on update and now refresh this page again. Click on privacy policy and now it's a little bit better. At least the, the as far as the width goes. But I don't think it added the light box display type. Let's try that again, light box. You'll see why I like this one better. As soon as I click privacy policy, you can see the background. So the, the people who click privacy policy, they know they're still on the page with the contact form. This is just a pop-up. When the background's totally whited out, it kind of seems like they're somewhere else maybe, whereas this way, it doesn't seem that way. You can scroll through here, click on the X, 
and then accept the privacy policy. You can build the same thing for your terms of service. And that's all there is to creating the acceptance boxes to force people to check these boxes before they can submit your contact form seven forms. And while you're here, I thought you might want to know about the completely free ultimate 17 point WordPress launch checklist. It is a checklist, a detailed checklist of all the things that you need to do or should do before you launch a WordPress site written by me, someone who's launched thousands of websites over the years. This is a checklist I created almost 10 years ago and it's been downloaded at least 100,000 times. I haven't checked the stats lately, but it was over 100,000 a few months ago. It is a checklist of what you go through before you launch a website. And there's two versions of it. There's this version here. It includes videos and includes links to other resources. So it really takes you through the steps you need to take to launch your website in a nice format like you see here. And we also have a print friendly version over here. So you can print it off. And this is a smart PDF. That means it will adjust to the size of your screen. For example, if you're on iPhone 12 Pro, see how it all adjusts to fit the smaller screen? It messes up the WordPress and the title up here. But everything else, it goes down to the smaller screen. What if you have a Galaxy Fold? It'll look like this. Or at least pretty close to what this is. Unlike other PDFs that don't shrink, that are a real pain to look at when they're shrunk down. And the, the uh, print friendly version works the same way if you want just black and white. And they're also downloadable. Click on the little download button and you download the PDF to your computer. The benefit of the smart PDF as well is when I update it, you will get the updates instantly. So you can get this just by opting in with your name and email address on the page that I've linked to in the description down below. You get this totally for free. And when you download it, you'll have the current version of it. But then if I update it in the future, this smart PDF at this URL will be updated with the new content that you can come back and download it again. So I recommend when you opt in that you bookmark this page so you can save it for future reference. And every few months, I don't update it every week, but every few months or so, come in here, check if there's some changes, download the new version, and you're good to go. So if you want to join over 100,000 fellow WordPress users and get this PDF checklist for yourself, do so now. There's a link down in the description. All you have to do is enter your name and email, and I will send you emails. Most of those emails are just about videos I've published on my various channels. Sometimes I send you offers for stuff you might be interested in, mostly uh, WordPress courses and stuff that I offer myself. And it's no big deal. You can unsubscribe at any time and then keep this checklist forever anyway. Page, on there you enter your name and email, and I will send you the PDF in your email and it also takes you to a thank you page after you opt in where you can download it and access it directly from that page. Next up, check out the next video in this Contact Form 7 series. It's right up here or go to the full playlist that shows all the parts of the series right down here so you can pick and choose the ones you want to go to next. And if you haven't done so yet, click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. My name is Bjorn from WP Learning Lab. Till next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.